How do you get started with Vim in 2023? Well, first of all, I would use NeoVim, not Vim. And the main reason for that is because of Lua. But before I get any further, you really have to ask yourself, is NeoVim for you? Because NeoVim is really not for everybody. And I don't mean that like not everybody can learn it. It is something that anyone could learn if they just, you know, apply themselves to it. It is difficult. It has a steep learning curve, but it's far from impossible. But I would only get into this if it's something that like you're really genuinely interested in learning. And yes, I do think that NeoVim increases my productivity. Personally, I think I am a faster programmer because of it. But being fast at programming is not the end all be all. And honestly, when I was still using VS Code, I I was still a very productive programmer. It's not like the, the gap between VS Code and NeoVim is so big that like you'd just be insane not to use NeoVim, but I definitely think that there are some advantages to NeoVim. And also just getting used to the Vim key bindings, in particular, the H, J, K, and L. Those are just very useful movements to have ingrained in your muscle memory, even if you don't use NeoVim or Vim as your full-time text editor. In one of my other videos, I mentioned that I was using the Vim plugin for VS Code for quite a while. And if you're using an IDE like VS Code or one of the JetBrains IDEs like PyCharm or WebStorm, those have plugins that you can install that give you the Vim key bindings. And that's where I would start. Install that plugin and just start getting used to the key bindings. Because if you just jump straight into NeoVim, you're gonna get really frustrated really fast because you navigate entirely with the keyboard. And so it is really important that you are used to navigating with H, J, K, and L and jumping around a window or in NeoVim, that'd be a buffer using things like GG and Shift G or Control D to go down or control U to go up. Also using like control O and control I to jump around your jump list. Like getting used to and comfortable with those key bindings will go a long way when you do switch over to NeoVim. And I keep saying text editor, but lately, especially in the last two or three years, maybe just like two years, NeoVim has grown rapidly. And there's still kind of this prevailing sentiment that NeoVim should be like a very minimal experience. And while there's still value to that, at the same time, NeoVim has grown enough that you can make it into like a full-blown IDE if you wanted to. But once you do get used to all the Vim movements and you're comfortable with those in your current IDE, then that's a good time to start jumping into actual NeoVim inside of a terminal. And maybe that's another thing that I'll mention is when you do start using NeoVim and if you're on a Mac, don't use the default terminal app on Mac OS. It's got some issues. It'll still work, but there are better terminals out there such as iTerm2, Alacrity, Kitty, and my personal favorite that I use, Westerm. But if you're just trying to get started and you just want something that works, then I'd probably just go for iTerm2. And another tip, don't try to create your own config from scratch the first time. The community around NeoVim continues to grow and there's more support than ever for newcomers to come to NeoVim and plugins for NeoVim have really started to mature, which is another reason why I would recommend NeoVim over Vim, just because the approachability of writing plugins and extending your editor to do exactly what you want it to do has never been easier. And I would say that is almost entirely because of the Lua programming language and because of the NeoVim API that is really easy to hook into. And once you start to understand some of the fundamental concepts of NeoVim and Vim, like buffers and windows and tabs and auto commands and key bindings, then NeoVim really starts to become an approachable editor that is easy to tweak and play around with things. But even with that being said, Apart from just learning all the different key bindings for NeoVim, like your basic H, J, K, and L, or select, or change, or delete, or yank, enters, and rounds on words, or blocks, or paragraphs, that kind of stuff. Apart from that, there's another half that has a pretty big learning curve with NeoVim, which is just trying to figure out how to customize your configuration. And while there are conventions around how you do that, such as exposing some kind of setup function on a plugin, or having a config function for a plugin, at the end of the day, all these plugins are really doing is calling into the NeoVim API. And sometimes this provides an inconsistent experience and it's just kind of something that you have to get used to. But because of that, I really highly recommend using a pre-built config like LunarVim, that's one that I use, or NVChad is another really popular one, or there's AstroVim, or I'm sure a bunch of other ones. And I would start with one of those just to get an idea of what NeoVim can be like. Because the default NeoVim installation, if you just install it and use it bare bones, is I would not say a good 
good experience. I'll just say it leaves a lot to be desired, but there are some pre-built configs out there that give you a really good out of the box experience without you really having to do much of anything. And I actually still use LunarVim even after being a long time Vim user. And I used to maintain my own configuration even back when I was using VS Code, I, I still had my own NeoVim config, I think probably a separate Vim config, because I'd still hop into NeoVim every now and then to do different things, even though I was using VS Code as my main like uh, IDE text editor. But you can spend a lot of time just trying to configure basic stuff into your editor, like getting LSP support for different languages that you use, or getting like ESLint or Prettier support. Don't get me started on debugging, but also things like adding a file explorer or adding telescope, which is an amazing plug in as well as snippets syntax highlighting and whatever other goodies that you want in the ovim there can be a considerable amount of work just just getting a, a basic configuration up and running and and I don't know, I, I feel kind of uh, I don't know, annoyed. I don't know if annoyed is the right word, but but I kind of hate that I, I feel like I have to defend it being okay to use a, a pre-built config like LunarVim. There's nothing wrong with that. Just do it. It'll make your life easier. And if you're liking this, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you're really committed to learning NeoVim, I highly recommend going to Chris at Machine's YouTube channel and watching his playlist on configuring NeoVim. He goes into amazing detail in that series and it is jam-packed with information. And there might be some things that are a little out of date. Like I think you might be using Packer, which Packer just seemed like it was the, the cool package manager for like two seconds and then it was out the door and now we have Lazy. But still, I highly recommend going and watching it. And lastly, I have to say something about key bindings. Unless we're talking about one of the built-in key bindings or Vim movements, then just don't really pay attention to other people's key bindings or how they specifically do stuff. I think this is something that I struggled a lot with when I was first getting into Vim and NeoVim. And it's something that I still notice people talking about in comments, whether it's on one of my videos or it's on someone else's video, is how do you do X? I saw you use this key combination to do X, Y, and Z. And like, how do I do that? It's not working for me. And the reason for that is probably because me or whoever else went and set up their own custom key binding to do a very specific thing for them. So if you're confused at how somebody did something, don't pay attention to the key combination they used. Pay attention to the plugin that they used and go and find that plugin and look at the documentation and figure out what the user command was that was executed or what Lua function was called or however else you do something in NeoVim. And also realize that you can use NeoVim to only run or apply certain key combinations or key bindings in specific buffers. So for instance, I have this FT plugin folder, which is a standard folder for Vim. FT stands for file type, so file type plugins. And within these files, I have key bindings that only apply within a specific language. And so little things like that can definitely cause confusion to newcomers to NeoVim. And you know what? I, I think you just kind of have to continue exposing yourself to these things and uh, eventually they they just kind of come. But I don't know all the nitty gritty details of NeoVim and even if I did, there's no way that I could convey all of those things to you in a single video. That would be an extremely long video. And that also kind of leads into maybe one last little thing, which is NeoVim is still actively changing. It's under active development and there are just going to be some growing pains with it. So I think part of learning NeoVim is just being okay with <laughs> pulling out some of your hair and smashing your face against your keyboard because sometimes it's frustrating and I think you just kind of have to be okay with that. But it is way better than it was even just a couple of years ago. And if you've been thinking about jumping into NeoVim, now is a great time to do it. I hope this video was helpful and that you learned something from it. And as always, I hope to see you in the next one.